the maximum dive speed for the P-51 Mustang was determined based on analysis and testing. The speed was exceeded during wartime combat engagements. The intent of this video is to address the Mustang's maximum dive speed limits, why those limits are in place, consequences of exceeding these limits, and unpack seven case study combat encounter narrations where these dive speed limits were exceeded. The basis for the first part of this video is this section titled Shockwaves at 600 miles per hour from this April 1945 Declassified Air Intelligence Weekly Summary Document. A Mustang dove from a 40,000 foot altitude. During the dive, the plane experienced compressibility effects including visual observation of an upper wing surface ripple or shock wave. It then disappeared when the plane slowed down. He was likely the first ever surviving witness of a shock wave. No one believed him until camera footage confirmed his observation. This image shows a shockwave from a 1945 Air Force Journal article. The image was taken from this part of the wing. This clip shows a visible shockwave dancing on a 757's upper wing between the arrows from an MDO lab video. At a speed of Mach 0.76, the Mustang started to shudder and shake. He continued to increase the plane's dive speed to a value of Mach 0.86. At this point, the radiator, oil cooler, and hydraulic lines cracked from the vibrations. His true airspeed was clocked at 640 miles per hour, likely the fastest airplane verified speed up until that point. During these high-speed dives, a pilot experienced a couple effects of compressibility. Tail buffeting and vibrations occurred first. These images show subsonic airflow over both conventional and a laminar flow airfoil from a P-51 pilot training manual. As the airplane speed increases, a shockwave is formed and the flow separates. As the local flow over the plane's wing approaches Mach 1, a shockwave forms, the boundary layer disconnects and becomes turbulent. The turbulent, dirty air will strike the horizontal stabilizer and elevator, causing tail buffet loads. The buffet vibrations stop when the plane slows down as the flow reconnects to the wing's air wetted surface and the downstream flow becomes clean. High G dive pull up loads may exceed the plane's ultimate load factor and cause a catastrophic structural failure. This speed load factor graph from a P 51D flight manual shows the Mustang's safe flight envelope. The x-axis is a P-51's indicated airspeed from 0 to 505 miles per hour. The y-axis is a vertical load factor in G's from minus 4 to 8. If the plane flies in the red crosshatch zone, it has exceeded its design limit load and is considered unsafe. The maximum vertical load factor of the plane at a weight of 8,000 pounds is 8 G's, and its maximum design dive speed is 505 miles per hour indicated. This chart shows the location of the Mustang's cockpit gauges. The indicated airspeed gauges here, altimeter here, and accelerometer here. An accelerometer was not installed on all Mustangs. Most manuals do not show this gauge. The pilot found trimming the elevator prior to the dive helped in controlling the plane. This image shows the Mustang's left side cockpit controls. The elevator trim wheel is here. Rotate the wheel in this direction for nose heavy trim and this direction for tail heavy trim. The plane also had a tendency to porpoise. Best to hold the control stick firmly and not try to compensate for the short pitches and plunges. It will only make matters worse. This image shows the porpoise path of the plane. The Mustang's control stick is located here. When the shockwave forms, the lift also drops, affecting the plane's stability, widens the distance from the center of the lift to the plane CG, which makes dive recovery difficult. The following tips are recommended. Avoid compressibility by maintaining the plane's airspeed below three-fourths the speed of sound. This chart identifies the maximum dive speed of the Mustang to avoid compressibility effects. The y-axis is the altitude from 0 to 40,000 feet. The family of the curves are the plane's indicated airspeed from 250 to 650 miles per hour. The solid red line is the plane's maximum limit speed at altitude. The Mustang's flight envelope should stay to the left of this line. Flying the P-51 to the right side of this line may subject the plane to porpoising, buffet and vibration loads, a tail-heavy moment, high-G pull-out forces, and stiff control surface responses. The graph below shows a safe recovery dive altitude where the plane's vertical load factor stays within 4 Gs during the dive recovery pullout. The maximum pullout load factor of 4 Gs was selected since the average pilot can stand this level for around 10 to 20 seconds during dive recovery without blacking out as defined in this 1944 pilot manual. Always consider keeping the dive recovery load factor at or less than 4 Gs. If your plane is not equipped with an accelerometer, judge the load factor by the pressure you exert on the cockpit seat. This is truly flying by the seat of your pants. 
the P-51 cockpit has a placard listing the maximum limit diving speed to stay out of compressibility effects. The pilot should check these limits by looking at the airspeed indicator and altimeter. This placard is on the left side of the P-51's cockpit. The plane's true airspeed is a function of altitude and indicated airspeed, as listed in this table. The P-51's cockpit speed gauge reads indicated airspeed in miles per hour, not true airspeed. All pilot reports list speeds as indicated, unless otherwise stated. Avoid abrupt aileron usage. Don't dive vertically at altitudes above 30,000 feet unless your plane is equipped with dive brakes. Your speed may increase so rapidly you may not be able to keep the plane's speed below Mach 0.75. If at high speed, feather touch the controls as if you are at near a stalling speed. Don't recover from a dive abruptly, and best to recover at lower altitudes. This page lists recovery steps pilots should take in a high-speed dive. Stay calm, cut the engine's power, pull back on the throttle. You need to slow the plane below the compressibility airspeed limit. The P-51's throttle is located here on the left side of the cockpit. Relax the control stick's forward pressure. Do not yaw the plane to assist in slowing down. Hold the control stick steady. Don't compensate if porpoising. Once the speed is below the compressibility limit and the flow reattaches, you will regain full control of the Mustang. Gently pull out of the dive, keeping the plane's load factor below 4 g like in this path. Let's take a look at seven case study combat encounter reports where P-51s engaged with German fighters at high speed. These reports describe the combat engagements for kill credits. The reports list the type of engagement, date, unit, military time of encounter, location of attack, weather, enemy aircraft type, pilot claim, combat narration, and pilot making claim. This engagement occurred during a bomber escort mission at an altitude of 24,000 feet. 150 enemy planes were spotted. A ME-109 crossed 100 yards ahead of a P-51's path. The P-51 gave chase. The ME-109 started a vertical dive with a Mustang on its tail with wide open throttle. At an indicated airspeed of 600 miles per hour, compressibility effects started at an altitude of 15,000 feet. The Mustang experienced violent buffeting and oscillations. The ME-109 was also experiencing these conditions. It was bucking and skidding violently. At an altitude of 10,000 feet, the ME-109's right wing ripped off, the plane crashed, the pilot never got out, the Mustang never fired a shot. Based on this narration, the pilot claimed one ME-109 destroyed with the pilot killed. We can plot the 600 mile per hour indicated airspeed at a 15,000 foot altitude on the max limit dive speed altitude chart, where the safe flight envelope is to the left of the red line. The Mustang and ME-109 were flying at speeds well beyond the maximum limit designed dive speeds. Per the dive speed placard, Walter should have been flying no faster than 440 miles per hour at an altitude of 15,000 feet. He was flying 37% faster than the designed dive speed for that altitude. The ME-109 could not handle the loads induced and catastrophically failed. In the following six combat engagement narrations, I will show the full document, but only highlight overspeed parameters, plane's behavior, and plot the airspeed and altitude on the dive speed limit chart. The Mustang recovered from a dive at an altitude of 10,000 feet, traveling at 550 miles per hour. We can plot the Mustang's point in the sky values in the dive speed limit chart. The plane was flying in the unsafe zone, but did not relay any compressibility effects in the combat narration. The pilot experienced compressibility effects at 600 miles per hour, pulling out of a dive at 6,000 feet, pulling 7 Gs. Either of these parameters placed the plane in the danger zones for catastrophic failure in the dive speed or VN charts. His point in the sky values were extrapolated beyond the VN graph values. A P-51 was dive chasing an ME-109. His Mustang shuddered and a rudder cable broke. The plane was at an indicated airspeed of 650 miles per hour at an altitude of 500 feet. The plane was experiencing compressibility effects. A P-51 dove from 28,000 feet, reaching a speed of 650 miles per hour at an altitude of 7,500 feet. His flight parameters placed him well outside the safe flight envelope. However, no compressibility effects were detailed. A Mustang was in a vertical dive trailing and firing on an ME-109 down to a 3,000-foot altitude. The plane was fluttering at a speed of 600 miles per hour, and this caused wild grouping. We can plot his point in the sky here, where compressibility effects were felt. A P-51 dove vertically, chasing an FW-190 from 29,000 feet down to 3,000 feet. The Mustang was vibrating very badly. Its speed was 600 miles per hour at a 12,500-foot altitude. He encountered compressibility effects. 
We can replot the seven points on the P51 safe speed altitude limit graph and identify trends in the data. The circles are those encounters where compressibility effects were recorded. I would have predicted point three and maybe five should have experienced compressibility effects given they are somewhat enveloped between points four, six, and seven. Maybe the pilots experienced compressibility effects but did not record that information in their combat reports. This chart lists compressibility effects on the P-38 and P-47 where all planes experience buffeting. The lightning and thunderbolt tend to be nose heavy while the Mustang is tail heavy. If you found this P-51 dive speed limit discussion and case study review interesting, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.